Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. A number of weeks ago, I posted on social media asking people's input into how they shift or what tools they use to shift from hopelessness into hopefulness. Because it's something I was sort of pondering recently. Um, I sort of look around my life now and I, I realise that I have hope and that I'm eager for life and I'm eager to engage in life and to really live fully. But a few years ago, there was a time when I felt completely hopeless. And I was trying to understand, you know, what what caused that shift? What took me from a space where I felt like every door that I knocked on was closed in my face to one where, I, you know, I'm excited about life again. And I mean, I know my own journey, but I wanted to know about other people's journey as well. And I got some wonderful input and I'm going to share some of that with you this week. So some of the things that people have talked about is gratitude. And that's something that I did myself. Um, I started up a gratitude group specifically to support me through um, the, my, my move once when I was moving house. Um, and then it carried on much, much more beyond that. And it's still going now. And actually, I'll put a link to anything I talk about. I'll put links to in the notes below. And so I, I know about that. And then other people had different ways of doing it. So a lot of people mentioned to just remind themselves that nothing is permanent and that everything changes and shifts. So that was a very common theme that went through what a lot of people talked about. And some people put sort of willpower into it. Um, they kind of forced themselves to turn away from the hopeless feeling and to take action, to go for a walk or do something physical, um, or to, to force themselves to start feeling positive. And then there was Alex Stanfield. And we've actually, and I'm going to share this with you next week, we actually did an interview because I really found what he was talking about really fascinating. He was talk talking about the dorsal vagal state, which I suppose if you're not into science and whatever else might be a little bit boring for you. But I really found it fascinating how the physical state um, mirrors what's going on with us emotionally, which I've known for a long time, but he was particularly knowledgeable about how to use our nervous system to help us shift into a more hopeful state. So we had a wonderful sort of over an hour long conversation, which I'm going to edit down so you won't have to spend an entire hour listening to us. But what really struck me was um, the energy of the conversation. I love conversations like this. I really love conversations that challenge and dig deeper into my understanding and my knowing of something. And what came out at the end of the conversation, for me anyway, was that I think hopelessness is part of Source's way of getting us back on track. But because we have focused so much on building our intellect and our mind, we get trapped in that state. So, and I'll go into and I'll explain why this is. So when we become hopeless, we give up hope, we give up effort, we give up everything. And I think that our natural inclination in that state is to surrender, to surrender to life, to surrender to the situation, to accept everything and just completely surrender. And when you fully do that, in that moment, you can connect with all that is with source. I mean, I call it source. You might call it God, Allah, Jehovah. I, I really don't mind. Um, it's the same thing. You surrender to that that is greater than us. And in that moment, it's almost like it has space to slip in and carry us in our lives. Because until that, we might be fighting against whatever is going on in our life, which is what's caused us to then become hopeless. <laughs> but unfortunately, because we focus so much on the mind and we've built up our mental faculties so much, I think what happens now is that people that fall into hopelessness, instead of completely surrendering and accepting the reality that they're in, and finding that space and light that then is allowed to sort of crack in. Um, there's a beautiful, sorry, I just suddenly remembered something as I'm talking. There's a beautiful saying about that light can be found in the cracks or the cracks allow the light in. I can't remember exactly what it is. I'll try and find it and I'll pop it down below as well. And to me, that's exactly what it is. In that hopelessness space, when you completely surrender, you allow the cracks, you, you crack open and allow the light in and the light comes in and lifts you up. But when we go into our mind and our thoughts and we get stressed and we can't step out of that 
churning noise and mess that is our, our mental state sometimes, then we're not completely surrendering. And I think that's when we, we end up with depression and anxiety and all these other things that um, impact so many people's lives. So I don't really know what the outcome of all of this is. I suppose it's really to reiterate things that I've spoken about in the past, how important being present, um, being able to release emotions and find peace when you're stressed. And I've done a number of um, episodes on things like this, and I'll put links to them below as well so that you can access them easily. But it's really about learning to get out of your head. So if you find yourself in a space of hopelessness, um, I mean, by all means, try the other things that I've spoken about that people have shared with me. But I think that the most important thing is to give up the resistance to what currently is going on in your life, to accept it fully. Um, I do breathing techniques, uh, one of which is the 711, which is breathing in for the count of seven, breathing out for the count of 11, which Alec and I talk about actually in, in our talk. And he goes into how it affects the, the nervous system and everything else and how important it is. And finding that space out of my head. So first of all, I start with the breathing. So I focus on the breathing because when you're focusing on breathing, you're not um, bringing awareness to the thoughts in your head. Your awareness is focused on your breath. And then for me, I start focusing on sort of stepping outside of my physical being and connecting with everything that is around me and being fully present wherever I happen to be. Um, and you can do it at any time. You can do it when you're tidying. You can do it when you're driving, just being very, very aware of the car and the steering wheel and the sounds. You can do it when you're walking. You can even do it when you're working. Although if you're using your mind, it can be a little bit sort of more tricky. Well, I don't know if it actually works if you're using your mind, to be honest. But if you've got physical work, then you can definitely do that. I find when I paint as well, which I haven't done for a while, but when I paint, um, I find that space as well. And it's about allowing more of that into your life because it's in those moments when you're still and you're calm and you're present that you allow the energy of source to come in. And the more that you allow that in, the more that you will find yourself lifted. And before you know it, you'll look around at your life and realise that you can find moments of hope and things to look forward to. Because I think that's what it is. It's about hopelessness for me. My experience of it was disconnecting and disengaging with life and kind of giving up hope that there was anything in life. And as soon as hope starts to come in, it's realising the wonders of life. Um, so that's another thing I would add as well, is to purposefully look around at the things that that light you up, that bring wonder to you, things that give you joy, because that again is where you can start to engage with life and feel hopeful that there is that things will change. Um, I hope you've enjoyed yourself today. As always, um, you can get hold of me through my social media or through my website, the links to which are below. I also do a number of online courses which you can find on my website. And if you've enjoyed this episode and you'd like to hear more from me, don't forget to subscribe because then it means that you will always be notified when the next episode is ready. Lots of love and have a fabulous week. Bye bye.